What's up, queens? We're here for another episode. So make sure you grab whatever relaxes you because we're about to have some queen chat. And today is a big episode. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. This is so important with everything that has gone on, everything that is still going on, and all the fight that we have to fight right now, period, in 2020. So I'm Monique Loveless. Ladies, let them know who you are. Hey, guys. What's up? It's Kiki Boom Boom. Hey, queens. It's Miss Candy Marie. Okay, pass on to get your head. And like, let's just get right into this episode. Um, how would you explain to the opposite side what Black Lives Matter means? I got mine already. <laughs> okay, so I feel as though <laughs> Black Lives Matter does not mean anti-white. Let's just get that straight. Stop, hey. stop thinking that it means anti-white because Black Lives Matter does not mean anti-white. Right. It also doesn't mean that nobody's lives matter. Like, shut that hashtag down as well. Black Lives Matter means we are out here as Black people getting killed like George Floyd, Eric Gardner, and even more people that we're going to name after this. And, um... It means that their lives matter. If you can walk out Dylan, who went into a church as a racist and literally went on a terrorist attack, and you can you can civilizely you let me just say because I just made up a word, you can walk him out civilized and do what you're supposed to do as protect and 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 serve justice to the community. Why would you not do the same to somebody who was called on for fraud or whatever else it may be, a pack selling a pack of cigarettes? There is no reason why their lives should be handled like they were and not the same as a terrorist. And that is what Black Lives Matter mean. Our lives matter too, not just when you feel like it's okay, when it's time to use our culture, when it's time to be a culture vulture, when you want to have your hair, your, your beauty supply stores and all these other places where you're playing Drake and you're playing Nicki Minaj, that's not when black lives just matter. They matter every day. A life matters. Yes. But we're not saying anti and we're not saying anti lives don't matter. And we're not saying anti white. So I wish people would get them off that. I don't know if that was y'all's definition, but that sure in the hell was mine. I'm passionate about this, so y'all go on. I'm sorry. I went on a rant, but. Um, I, I kind of equate it to, like, the, it's, it's a form of tribalism. You know, people who, people definitely are going to care more about people that look like them. And it's one of those things where, you know, if Jermaine gets killed on the block, Jermaine should have the same type of empathy and same type of emotion that as if Timmy got killed on the block. So I think a lot of people don't insert their children and their brothers and their loved ones in those situations because whether you're white, black, Hispanic, Asian, whatever, if that's your husband, son, brother on the floor and a cop has their knee on their neck, you would definitely feel that emotion. But because you see a different skin color, you automatically think, okay, well, they're not, they're not, they're not part of me. But at the end of the day, when you strip the skin color away and all this other stuff, we're all human. We all have a, the same set of emotions and we all go through the same set of ish, especially living in America. So you need to realize that, yes, your life matters, Timmy's life matters, Becky's life matters, but so does Jerome, Tyrone, Umshika, all their lives matter too. And we want the same type of respect that you give Becky, Karen, all them people to our children, our family members as well. Right, because we're valuable. We're just as valuable as a white life, and we're just as valuable as a Hispanic life and every other life, because it's shown through history that the treatment hasn't been the same. And that's what we're asking for. We're asking for the same treatment. We're asking for the same laws that you um, use to uphold uh, for a white person to be used for a black person. There is no reason that you walk, like you said, Dylan Roof out of this situation and he is unharmed, but a yet and still a black man who just apparently forged a $20 check, who complied with you, is thrown against the ground like a criminal, 
and has a, a knee on his neck. Like, how do you explain that? This man complied with you. Or, or, or a black man that's standing there with his hands up that is unarmed, and then a police officer comes and kicks him in the back. That is not justified. Because if a white person stands up and says, I know my rights, you're not going to do that to him. So we demand the same exact respect. So when we say Black Lives Matter, that's what we mean. We matter. Our, our, the laws apply to us, too. The same treatment applies to us. And the, and the way that you treat white people should be applied to us as well. So Black Lives Matter because you treat us as if they don't. Okay. To retweet everything you ladies said. And it sucks that we have to even have to say Black Lives Matter, and we have to even explain to people, well, guys, we're saying everyone matters, but we matter too, and it's just so unfortunate, but retweet everything you three ladies said, and that's all we're saying is, guys, we matter too. If you want to arrest us, arrest us, but arrest us like you did Dylan. Dylan got Mc Burger King after McDonald's. He, after he mur McDonald's, after he murdered nine people, but you are, the store person assume that George wrote a bad check. I don't care if George... Put somebody in the face. Nobody deserves to die. I don't care if no. you thought a mod done stole some goddamn wood from that construction site. We don't deserve it. And if you're going to arrest us, arrest us, protect and serve. But for me to be in handcuffs and there's four of you on my back and my neck, That's it's unacceptable. Right. For Eric Garner to tell you, yo, I'm, I, I have interactions with you. I'm just telling Lucy's. But for 10 of you to jump on me, for Sandra Bland to get pulled over, and she says to the cop, like a lot of my white friends have done before, hey, I know my rights. I don't have to talk to you. But you're going to slam on the floor. That's all we're saying is everyone's lives matter. But unfortunately, y'all don't hear when we're saying this. We got to tell you Black Lives Matter and we are human. We're not animals. And treat us as such. Because we talked about this on the last episode where the dog, there, I don't know if people know this, but there are more animal shelters than there are homeless shelters. I love animals. Peter, don't talk to me. I love animals. <laughs> but the fact that Karen in the park got in trouble because her poor little doggie was being choked. So that's all we're saying. Right, and it's sad that it's really sad that a dog lives matter before our, as a human being, our lives I mean, my matter kid, less. My went to jail for a very long time. Animal. Yeah, my kid went to jail for a very long time. So that's and you oh. have you have football players raping girls and doing all sorts of mad madness, and he he goes to jail for having dogs fight, killing like, their wives, abusing their wives. Uh, yeah. Uh, like you like you said, TK, and then Michael Vick to jail. So that just shows, that to me is just so disheartening because to me as a black woman, I'm like, damn, my animal's life matters more than mine. So that's why we have to have hashtag Black Lives Matter. Right. And do y'all mm -hmm. yes. feel like, um, how would you explain it? This This is a question. How would you explain it to the opposite side? Let me answer this, guys, because I clearly am on the subject. I am tired of explaining shit to y'all, point blank, period. It is not for me to explain that Google is free, okay? You can learn all the history you need to learn right on Google. Google that shit. And I don't owe you a ticket to the barbecue just because you took up for me as well. Okay. No, it's your right okay. to educate your own goddamn people. Like, Okay, I'm done. Sorry. I can't. <laughs> I, I, okay, so I have, I have a personal story, and, and I, it's interesting because I've never, I've never really shared this story before, but as most of you may know, I come from a black and white descent. Um, my white side is very, very, uh, they're racist. I'm just going to put it out there, racist. And um, my mother has six uh, babies. Five of them are mixed, and because of their racism, which I believe was taught to them. As my mother began to have uh, babies, uh, we came out looking white initially. Um, and our hair was straight. And as our hair started to curl and our color started to come in, that's when they started to disown us. Because initially they thought that for one second, maybe this baby might just be white. So that made me feel growing up like, you know, what was so wrong about being black? And to hear at such a young age, like I had to fight for my blackness at such a young age, like four and five years old, I, I remember asking my dad, like, why don't they like us? Like, why don't they accept us? And I remember, like, I actually remember being called a nigger. Like, I, like, I learned the word nigger at a very, very young age. And as I started to grow up, I started to realize, you know what, that's their choice. 
that's not that has nothing to do with me and i think it, it goes back to black lives matter it's a choice to want to be woke and to want to be open to what's really happening to want to see it and the same thing goes to every single white person and you know um what's my man's name that is george floyd's uh brother um, Steven Jackson. 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 And what he said to me, I think was so very important. He said, you know, if you want to do business with me, you better be standing to the, to, like to the right of me. You better be standing next to me because there are so many white people out there. They love black culture, but do they really love us? No, because if you really love us, then you would be standing next to me. You would be standing beside me. You would be fighting with me because this is your fight too, because at the end of the day, we're human beings first, regardless of color, regardless of sex, regardless of any of that, we're human beings first. And if it's a human issue, if it's a race issue, it's a human issue, period. Okay. I want to speak. Okay. <laughs> period. Like, Paul Mooney said it best. Everybody want to be a nigga, but don't nobody want to be a nigga. Mm -hmm. um, Candy, thank you for sharing that because my really good friend, one of my best friends, my roommate, Drew, who's also biracial, this is something that she's going through as well right now um, because her family, her mother's white, her family, they're white. And these are the conversations that she and I are having right now where she's like, you know, as a black woman, how, why do I have to keep explaining to my white family why these issues matter? And she's going through this right now. So thank you for sharing that because I really want her to hear you say that. And yeah. I think for a lot of people who are biracial, who are mixed, or who are going through the things where they have family members who are racist, mm -hmm. who don't understand why this is a human issue. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for sharing that because I definitely want her to hear your side as well because she's going through that right now. Tell her to call me. Yeah, I'm going to definitely tell her to call you. I'm going to definitely tell her to call you because she's going through that. You guys have so much similarities and I definitely want her to give you a call. So I'm going to let her know. So Drew, if you're listening, okay, yeah. so right now. but no, like you said, like Paul Moody said it best. Everybody want to be a nigga, but don't nobody want to be a nigga. And that's because like everyone loves our culture. And I wish people loved black people the way they really love our culture. And I'm happy to see people calling people out. Like I'm happy that I seen Jackie Aina calling out Fashion Nova and Pretty Little Things. How yeah. dare you capitalize? These are things that I shop from. Shit, everything I wear is Pretty Little Things. And Revolve, how dare you capitalize off of our culture? Someone tweeted and said, oh, we hold these celebrities to a high standard. No, call their asses out. Call the Kardashians out. They got black kids. Call these people out. I, like, Fuck that shit. I'm sorry, y'all. I am pissed. And like you guys, I know you guys are pissed as well. Call these fucking people out. And I am checking my friends who are not black. If you are white, Hispanic, Asian, I'm checking your social media. I'm checking to see what you're doing. I'm checking to see if you're donating. I don't need your retweet and your fucking memes about a black and a white hand holding. I need for you. I need the action. I need you to be an ally. Kiki, yeah. I'm glad that you I'm said sorry. How, how do you expect, because that's the next question. How do you expect, how what do you expect from your non-black friends and how do you feel like they can help and how have they, you know, been a part of it if they have? Well, I have a couple things. Um, it's just one of those things where, and I said this again in, in a, in the previous uh, episode that we have to be in positions of power and how we get in positions of power is, you know, you, you either shop at black businesses or you, sh you support black entrepreneurs, stuff like that. Because the more it, it was on killer Mike's uh, documentary on Netflix, where he's saying the, the average dollar is like six minutes that, that, that spends in the black community. We're giving away our money. And it's one of those statistically fact check just real quick. Statistically, you know, that, the black population only makes up 12%, right? But we spend over 30% of our dollars. Of course. So economically, we are the ones who are making the dent when we're the, one of the smallest communities that... Right. So we have that purchasing, we have that purchasing power, but yet still some of us, and, and I, I definitely think it's a mind thing, some of us choose or some of us think that this brand is better because it's the major brand and it's run by, you know, Tommy Lee Jr. and, you know, senior and all of them. You know what I'm saying? Like we have to, one, support black businesses. And two, if, if a black business does something, if you go to a black restaurant and their service is a little bit slow, give them the same type of pass that you would give a white business. Because if you go to a white restaurant, their service is a little slow, you'll still complain, but you'll go back. But with a black business, if it's, if it's a little bit slow, you're never going back. And I feel like, yes, we, we have to hold our people to a higher level, but we also have to let, we also have to allow them, let them have that pass because it could be an off day. We're all human. So I definitely think the power, the power as far as we need to get the power back and start with investing in our own communities, 
our own businesses and keep the money within the community like the Jewish people do. We definitely need to establish that. And I just, we just need, I, I don't know if we need somebody. It's like, it's not, not something that's new. This is not a brand new concept. I've heard several people say it. It's just like, we just can't uh, on a whole get on, collectively get on that bandwagon. And I'm, I was talking to somebody yesterday about it. I just don't know what needs to be said or did or how many people need to die or how like for us to understand that we have a lot of power even down to the boat a lot of people think look i'm not even going on a tangent but we have a lot of power that we're not using you know i'm so glad you said power because when i think about our power i think back to the black panthers right and i had so much respect when the black panthers showed up in georgia on behalf of ahmad arbery because it was just like like, I don't know, I just felt that strength. And when I saw those, those armed black men, you know, stand there guarding and the police stood down, I feel like that's where we are today, you know? And the, one of the other things I thought about as I was hearing you speak was compassion. I, I don't think that, that other races are giving each other compassion, you know? Like, like, that's something that we also need to talk about is compassion. But going back to the Black Panthers, I think that, I think, I think it's going to take for us to really rise up because now everybody's a part of the conversation. Like, to hear, to be watching CNN and to see so many anchors speaking on behalf of what it means to be Black, but let's be honest, a lot of these anchors and a lot of these people that are finally speaking on our behalf, they always saw this shit, but they never spoke up. Okay. So like, now it's like now that everybody's speaking up everybody wants to be a part of the conversation so i think that since we're there we need to really like make moves we need to really make things happen don't just talk about it don't just agree with us but stand with us fight with us um we need to overthrow this damn president okay period and we need to own our power and educate to piggyback on that and educate ourselves because yes. we're we're retweeting and <laughs> re-saying a lot of stuff that's just like, Bang! Boss! Not, not gonna true! Burn, but, so, you know, <laughs> books are important, guys. And if you don't want to read, there's an audio book. There's so many different options. So please educate yourself because um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of seeing ignorant stuff on my posts. It's like, wait, that's not true. I could provide facts. Right. Um, so right. Please, right. That, that's a huge thing. Don't let Twitter and Instagram and you know, people who don't have, I don't even want to put the whole doctorate thing, but people who haven't studied those subjects tell yeah. you what the truth is because you don't even know where they're getting their facts from. Okay. Right. And that's, and that's the funny part, being in media, I feel like with us being in media, it's like we receive a lot of information kind of first um, and we see stuff first and it's like you kind of know facts first. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and it's just, you see some stuff and you're just like, no. And this is where I think I have really been, like this week, I will say, like I had discussed with y'all before, this week has been very trying to me because I feel like even though I'm in media, I'm not exactly where I want to be. But for some reason, I need to find a way to impact. Like, what are we educating? We, a lot of people don't even know the legal system. I saw somebody post up like, oh, it's third degree manslaughter for George. No. And then somebody followed up like there is no degrees of manslaughter. It's only voluntary, involuntary. Wrong. Like <clears throat> they charged him on third degree murder. They charged the, um, Derek, uh, I don't know how to say his last name, Shavayan oh. or whatever, the police officer enjoyed George Floyd's uh, right now where we're at, they, you know, arrested him for third degree murder and second degree manslaughter. And a lot of people don't even know what that is. They're mad because it wasn't first degree or second degree murder, but they can prove third degree murder. Like that is, we don't even know our own judicial system, government, legal stuff. We, out of all the people, even the Black Panthers knew their rights. It's mm -hmm. time for us to educate ourselves Google is free, y'all. I'm going to keep saying that. Google is going to sponsor us because Google is free. But make sure you Google the right things. Just don't yeah. do that. If you Google because the right things. People post, and I've seen black people post ignorant shit where it's like they'll post a photo of MLK and they're like, this is a peaceful protest. I'm like, yes, but have you heard of the, the what happened when MLK was marching in Selma? They were arrested. They were beaten. They were dogs put on them. Don't show me no picture. Tell like if you want to quote MLK, quote MLK in his authentic self. 
Right. Both the shit that he's speaking about. Don't give him no peaceful bullshit. MLK and those people were peaceful. They had on suits and they were still beaten. MLK was murdered. Like, and I've seen like a lot of like celebrities posting like, oh, we need to kumbaya and hug it I out. Love like, stop telling us what we need to do. Shamik Moore, th- we don't need to do anything. We are just here living. Talk to the white people. That's who needs to get their shit together. Because I've seen him saying, what do we as a black people need to do to stop being murdered? We're not doing anything. He, the time we just breathe and and the like, our, our house sleeping. We're not doing anything. Talk to the people that's doing shit. So if you're going to quote MLK, quote MLK in his authentic self. So I think black people, we need to educate ourselves as well and know our history. Yes, like, we do. Goes and I feel- a taxi. Like enough is enough. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Cause I was cutting you off. That's my bad. No, no, no. I, child, I'm just but- <laughs> Seriously, all in all, like even somebody like Shamik Moore who decided to say, I mean, clearly at this point he has apologized, but he decided to get on after his rant and say um, Rosa Parks didn't need to be arrested because she could have just took a black taxi. But he had did his homework and known the facts. Yes, there were black owned certain taxi cabs, but not where she was in the deep south. And and buses. But not where Rosa Parks was in the Deep South. Like, enough is enough. Like, if you're going to fucking spit facts, know your history. Don't talk ignorant. Like, these people have risked their lives and did what they had to do to get us the right to vote. Rosa Parks, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't speak shit and talk about she could have taken a fucking black owned cab. Ain't no goddamn Uber. Like, enough is enough. It is. Well, Go ahead. I, I, I think I that too, it's one of those things where um, it's a lot of revisionist history, especially I was talking to somebody today, like, the the people are in high school now. If you look at how they talk about slavery and how they're educated on slavery, they're not getting the gruesome details. And, you know, you, you have, you know, every February comes around, you talk about Martin Luther King, you talk about Malcolm X, you talk about Rosa Parks. But there's so many people beyond that that we should know about that should inspire us. But the educators are not going to tell us that because that's part of our history and that will give us more power and more strength. So we as a community need to educate ourselves. And we as a community need to want to educate ourselves because we have far too many people who just want to buy the watches, who just want to go and party on 4th of July, who just want to go and smoke weed, nothing wrong with weed, but when you smoke the weed, read a book. Like there's so many other things that, you know, we can do as a people to start off versus, you know, coming up with these, these, these assumptions. And yes, white folks need to do their own thing, but because they are the oppressors, the likelihood of them wanting to, the likelihood of them wanting to research, the likelihood of them wanting to know about us, they don't need to do that. You know what I'm saying? Yes, we would love them, and some, some of them are, but we as a people need to take our power, power back. We can't rely on the white folks to clothe us, to feed us, to give us more money, to do this, to do that. We have to take the power back, and that starts from grassroots type, type stuff. And the moment we collectively do that is the moment that, yes, our lives are going to be even more in jeopardy because now we're more of a threat because we're, we're a threat in general because we're all separated. We're not even acting as a unit and they're killing us. Right. So right. Together, we're going to be far more of a threat and we have to be willing to risk our lives in order to help our families down the line. Right. I agree with that 100%. And I think it all goes back to uh, understanding our power. Um, I think as black people, we need to understand that we influence culture. We influence music. We influence culture. Um, when people are hiring for entertainers, the majority of the time they're going to hire R&B artists or hip hop artists. And that originates from black culture. So knowing our power, knowing our value, knowing where that comes from, knowing our history, um, because this is such a click society that we live in. Everybody wants to click on things that, that make them laugh. Or, uh, or instead, instead, we need to, as, as people that are in power, we need to say, hey, if you want to work with me, then you need to also respect me and where I come from. As an artist or an athlete, it's like, hey, Nike, okay, you want to work with me? Okay, this is, this is what I want to do to educate my people. Do you stand behind it? It's like we have to hold these corporations accountable, you know? Like, as leaders, we need to actually be just that. We need to be leaders, you know? We got to start holding these people that are also leaders accountable. It's like, what can we do with what we have, which is social media? Right. How can we control that? How can we control sports? You know, how can we start holding all of these people that we're putting money into their pockets accountable? It all starts with knowing our power at the end of the day. It really does. And I, I like that you said that because I'm a big, sorry, you know, I'm a big Jay-Z fan. Ah! 
I'm a Jay-Z fan, and I've said this before. I feel as though everybody, even down to the players on football teams who still got their checks signed by white men and cashed those checks, was throwing stones at Jay-Z in the limelight, on TV, in these interviews. And this man... I agree with Tyler Perry. Sometimes we don't always need to see that table, but there was no seat. We had no voice at all in a certain arena that's a billion dollar, if not trillion dollar, um, what is it, um, company or what is it? Enterprise. Yeah. And so you have somebody who finally got a seat at the table that is of us, finally got to see the table. Then had a nerve to take that power back and have them donate the money that they use on us anyway into the incarceration effect, which usually affects a high number of people of color and, and black people. Black men. And, yeah. And so that just goes to show, like you said, Kenny, that just goes to show with us getting gaining power, like for us to take our power back and say, you know what, sometimes we do need a seat at the table so that we can have our voice at the table. That does there's a difference between getting a seat at the table and switching up mm. than getting a seat at the table and putting our voices there at the table. Or what are you doing with the power that you've been given? Like you've been given this power. Like why are we giving stupid people the power? Okay. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Nothing against Cardi B, but I do have something against Cardi B. I had okay. nothing but something at the same time. When, I, when she first got famous, I was like, why the fuck are we giving dumb people attention? You know, but then we, and yet and still we get mad when they become our voice. Well, we gave them the attention to begin with. We gave them the clickbait. We gave them the, the views and, and the impressions and all that other bullshit. And then we get mad when they get to the forefront and they become our leaders. Well, yeah. we gave them famous. Right. Like, we got people that are trying to educate our communities that we don't give attention to. Like a, a picture of me half naked is going to get more likes than a picture of me um, uh, preaching or educating our community about our community. Here's the thing. Here's the question, though. Let, let's take Cardi B, right? So, um, and I think Kiki, in your previous epi episode, you're talking about Doja Cat. When we, when we support our own artists, like we support them and then the mainstream media gets a hold of them and especially they get a hold of the ones that are that appear not as educated and they put them on the limelight limelight because you know working for real 923 and iheart and stuff like that the majority of people in la i'll speak for la uh, itself the majority of people who call in the majority of people who buy the tickets and the albums all this stuff are not us they're they're majority latino folks so it's just like they they pick we allow them to but they pick the ones, a la Kanye West, they pick the ones that, that don't accurately, accurately, rep, accurately represent us and they put them on this, this pedestal. And this is now the portrayal to the world. And yes, we as, we as people definitely have to, you know, highlight the people who are motivators, who are inspiring us and stuff like that. But um, Charlemagne the God was talking about it on Breakfast Club. When they have more educational videos, they barely, I wouldn't say barely, but they don't get as many views as somebody acting ratchet on Breakfast Club. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's definitely, I agree with you, but there's also that complex thing on top of that where that's where if we had the power, we can control the narrative more. Because now the people who are controlling the narrative, the people who are putting the people that don't actually represent us on the pedestal are not the people that look like us. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. I do feel that way. How do you think that, how do you think that we can make change? What are some things that y'all feel like we can change that? Because we, as, as hashtag Black Lives Matter, I feel like they try to encompass everything in that. But that's, you know, if we come together as a group, I feel like that will help move, not just this as a movement as our lives matter, but also let's get the power and have a seat at the table. Yeah. Uh, I also just want to say like, for black people, black lives matters, but that's every black life, not just black men, 
Black women lives matter. Black LGBTQ plus I lives matter. Mm-hmm. Black trans people who are in LGBT, but I had to say trans separately because sometimes people forget about Black trans people. Every Black life matters. And I just wanted to make that clear because I know sometimes I've been seeing like um, a lot of divide within our own community and we're only talking about like just Black men, but Black women are suffering, Black gay people are suffering, Black trans, like everyone is suffering. So all Black lives matters. And that also not just for us, that goes for people who are not Black. Like, if you have Black female friends, Black male friends, Black boyfriends, Black wives, Black kids, Black trans friends, like, all of our lives matter. So I just wanted to put that out there as well. I'm so glad you said that. It's You're right. It's a human <laughs> problem. Just like we want other communities to support us, we also have to support other communities. We also need other communities to um, invest in Black-owned businesses. We need you to buy from Black-owned businesses. We need you to eat at our restaurants. Yes. That's what it comes down to, supporting one another, because every vo- person's voice is valuable and it needs to be heard, period. Period. Right. Candy, I do have a question for you since you are um, black and white. Mm-hmm. You have to do, you, and this is kind of like a family question. Do you talk to your white side of the family and do you have to explain to them, even though you've said they are racist, do you have to explain certain things to them? Do you still talk to them? Is that like a conflict? And where does it stand? And I feel like this is kind of, you know, a colorism thing, but where does it stand? Do you consider yourself? black or you're one or you know there are biracial women or other people who are just like oh no i don't consider myself just black because of both parts um to be okay so to be completely 100 uh, i made a choice that i was going to choose happiness um and my happiness does not include racist family members period um i don't interact with them um in any capacity i only interact with the people who accepted me when I was down and I was out because a lot of them also came knocking at my door when shit started popping in my life. And I'm sorry, but I don't have time for that. So if I have the ability to choose, I'm not choosing that. So if any of them are listening, sorry, it is what it is. Um, On another note, when it comes to like understanding my blackness, initially when I was younger, you know, I struggled with when people called me a white girl, I hated it. I got into a lot of fights growing up, being the lightest person going to black schools and people asking me, what are you? It frustrated me and I got into a lot of fights. Um, And then, you know, it was like, okay, am I disrespectful to my white mother if I don't claim that I'm multiracial? Am I disrespecting her? And then it got to a point as I got in high school where I really started to accept the fact that, you know what? The world sees me as a black woman, I'm a black woman. So when people ask me, what do you mix with? I'm a black woman, period. And that's where I stand right now. If anybody asks me, I'm a black woman first before anything. And that's in it. And it took a lot again for me to, to understand because at first it was like, it was a lot of like, I think people pleasing, like, I didn't want to disrespect my mother because I love my mother and because of the history that me and my mother had and, and then growing up in foster care. And then like the last time I saw my mother, I was 13 years old. So it was like, you know what? Am I disrespecting her if I don't say that I'm multiracial? But then it was like, nah, I'm a black woman first because I see what happens, the disparities that happen when it comes to being a black woman. So it, like, I take so much pride now when somebody asks me, what do you mix with? I don't even say I'm mixed anymore. It's like, I'm a black woman first. Period. I have bir- same candy. I have biracial friends who do that now too. They're like, mm-hmm. I'm black. I'm I have a white mother, a white father, but I'm black. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Retweet. But it, it came from like a place of healing. It came from a place of like accepting and it came from a place of like not I, I hate the colorism. I'm gonna be honest with you. I hate the colorism that black people experience. I hate the divide. I hate the oh my god, you're so pretty. What are you? Bitch, I'm black. I hate that shit. And and I know I like I, if, I, if I'm offending anybody for cussing, it's just coming from a very real place. I hate the whole, what are you mixed with? I'm a black woman because black comes in so many different beautiful colors, period. Right. Period. And and I, I like that you said that because um, rest in peace to my grandmother. She was, we were taught, there's only like four people in my, like my family that look like me. That's my mom and her two sisters. So my grandma's kids were always called the black baby. And so my grandma is very fair skinned and my great grandma, because she was back, back, back when she passed as white. And um, 
but my grandmother, she was always like, no, I'm a black woman, even when people would question her, because when I was with her, people would look at us sideways, like, did you adopt her? Or like so many questions. And, um, and she would say the same thing, Candy. She would say, no, I'm a black woman. Even in her time, she's like, no, I'm a black woman. And I feel like, you know, that is such a, for maybe y'all, and, and I'm just speaking from this place for her, it, it gave her a sense of power. Like she felt a sense of power to say, I'm a black woman. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you say? So, what'd you say? So continue. So yeah, that was all I was going to say. Um, but moving oh, into... Oh, uh, yeah, go on. Oh. Girl, what you got to say? I was going to say that... Um, I say it's 2 so o'clock. My, my mom... My mom <laughs> I see your my mom could pass as white. Um, she's Guyanese, which is in South America. You have Portuguese in the family, et cetera, et cetera. But um, the, the whole thing with colorism, you know, being the color that I was, and my dad was super dark, and my brother's a caramel complexion, and seeing how people treated my mother, there was a, a understanding there that, yes, we as a people shouldn't treat ourselves differently, but to also acknowledge that it exists and also acknowledge that there is some type of favoritism Mm -hmm. and you know maybe i feel it a little bit more because i witnessed it i witnessed how they treat my brother versus how they treat me i witnessed how they treat my mother versus when they see my six foot five dark-skinned dad walk into the building like i i I see all those things so it's definitely um something that should be eradicated but it's also there should be an understanding as to why it exists why it exists and how it came about and an understanding within our community as far as not treating ourselves differently, but knowing, you know, where it came from and, you know, acknowledging that and acknowledging the fact that you might feel this way because of this, this, you know, dark skin girl or dark skin guy or light skin or whatever treated you this way as a child, you know, so understanding those things and understanding those feelings and not just going with the first, oh yeah, well, she's light skin, I don't mess with her. You know, why, why is that? And asking those questions because yes, we all are mm-hmm. one, but also, you know, acknowledging there's, there was tribalism in Africa. We sold some of our own people because they weren't part of the tribe. So also looking at that part of history too and realizing that and then becoming one tribe. So right. that's my, that's my piece, sorry. Are y'all, um, are y'all, what do y'all think about the riots and looting that has happened? Um, and do y'all think peaceful protests actually is working or is the rioting working? I mean, we've been seeing peaceful protests since Dr. Martin Luther King and he's now dead. We've been, you know what I'm saying? We've been seeing peaceful protests since um, 1920s when Tulsa was burned down. We've been seeing peaceful protests when we wanted to get the vote. I just feel like like Dr. Martin Luther King, I don't want to misquote him, but he says writing is the voice in the language of people who are not being heard. And I understand the pain and I understand why people are writing. Like it's one of those things where it's like one of our own was murdered again. Um, mm-hmm. But right before George, Ahmad was murdered. And right before Ahmad, yeah. it was Sean. Mm-hmm. Right before Sean, it was Brianna. Right before Brianna. And there's a list of us that's been murdered since the beginning of Jesus's time. Um, I just feel like for us, there's nothing. It doesn't matter what we do. If it's a peaceful protest or we break out a window, it, no, it doesn't matter. But I know why we're doing it because we're angry, we're exhausted, we're pissed. And I think it's okay to want to be peaceful, but I also think it's okay to want to burn shit down. I understand it. We are tired, and I don't want to get emotional because I know I'm gonna cry. And it's okay, baby. Honestly, your your tears are important. Yeah, they are. Tears, please That's let them out. Me. Let them out. Cry if you need to. Let them out. Let them out. It's we exhausting. Are I know we, we talked before, and I know Monique, you asked me, "Was I doing okay?" And I'm not because I'm exhausted. But right. then I say to myself, "I'm only 34 years old." I think about the people who have been alive who are 70 and 80 and 90 and 60 and 50 who've been doing this shit. I think about them. Fuck me. I'm only 34 years old. We, we are babies to this shit. I think about the John Lewis's and Dr. Martin Luther King's kids and Reverend Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and Bernie Zinn. Like I think about the people who have been on this front line since forever, the people who are still alive to talk about it. I think about Sabrina Fulton, the mothers, and how tr- triggering this shit is for the mothers, the fathers, who have to go through this every time. And I'm exhausted, y'all. And I get why motherfuckers are burning shit down. 
I get it. I understand. So I, I do get pissed off when I see like Desi Banks posting stupid pictures talking about this is more peaceful and this is not. Shut the fuck up, bro. Honestly, truly, because Dr. Martin Luther King was murdered. And he did peaceful protests. These people had on suits. These people peacefully marched in Selma. You know what I'm saying? And it's not like we woke up and was like, mm, we hate the world. Let's burn shit down. We are upset. We had to watch one of our brothers have his neck kneeled on. We had to hear about our sister Brianna be murdered in our home. And we are fucking tired. So I understand. And I'm tired of sometimes. I feel like black people, we are too forgiving. Mm-hmm. Whom by fucking y'all? Mm-hmm. And I just feel like we always think about other people's feelings and no one thinks about ours. Mm-hmm. And I'm so sorry, y'all. It's because of, I'm, I'm drinking wine as well. I'm sorry. No, no. The You're CEO, good. The CEO of Target, I have to agree with what the CEO of Target said. It's a building, let that shit burn. You can bring a building back, but you can't bring a person back. And then I also want to agree with what Killer Mike said. I don't know if you guys had the opportunity to watch what he said. You know, we have to also remember that these are still our communities, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, be cautious yeah. when you burn the shit, you know? Um, burn it, but chill, right. TK. <laughs> that's, like TK for yeah. oh, that's the funny but, part, because that's what I was saying earlier today to my mom. I was like, you know, I had a friend who was, you know, in Inglewood when the Emmett Till riots went down, and he was just like, Yo, we didn't have food for a week. That that affected us, but they were still looking. They were still doing whatever they wanted to. At least I feel like the riots are kind of going in the right place now. Like, yeah. yeah, you have the targets, but CNN and all of them are also starting to show that it's white people that are starting to, to yes. discredit. Co-intel. Co-intel. To dis- yes, these cameras are picking that up to discredit what we are rioting, which was the police department and going to, when I saw them go to the home, y'all, I cried. I literally cried when I saw that they sent police officers to barricade this man home. But I also cried because it was like, not only did they take the protest to the streets, they literally took it to this man's home. Yes. And like, shout out to the black people who are calling the white people out for breaking windows and tearing stuff. There are black people that the news are not showing saying, yo, we're here to protest, but you got to chill out with breaking shit. You know right. what I'm saying? And I, Mike, um, Killer Mike's speech, someone tweeted something really good. It was like, Killer Mike had you riled up and emotional because what he was saying was true. It was like, you're angry and you're upset and you feel like you want to break shit, but you're also listening to what Killer Mike has to say. Yeah, him. I felt that shit. I was so emotional because I was like, fuck, burn it down. And then I was listening to Killer Mike like, fuck, he's right. Like, it was one of those things. And <laughs> I'm like, and I and like you said, Candy, I appreciate the CEO from Target. And then I also seen a really cool Facebook post where there was a young woman, she's Indian, and her father was saying, I think he was on the phone. Mahal, he, Mahal. Yes. Johnny he was Mahal. saying, let my restaurant burn. Let it burn. We'll re-fucking build that shit. But you okay. cannot bring a life back. So I understand why people are angry. And I also understand why people are peaceful. But I do shout out to the people who are calling people out saying, yo, stop breaking shit. Let's do this peaceful. But I see why people are burning shit down as well. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's for me. The- the, the of, of, of not having ownership you know yeah where you, people are saying oh well you know don't burn the stuff in our own community but do you own the restaurant do you own the beauty supply store do you own the nail salon like as we as a collective own any of that stuff so that's why it's easier for us to go and burn that stuff down because it's we don't own any of it and that's where the problem is and i don't want to be a broken record but if we own that stuff, then we have more power and that, that therefore, you know, the police get, we're the ones who are paying the police. So, you know, we, we need to, the, the, the collective of everything, if, you, if we're going to be in our own community, that we need to be owning some stuff. And if we don't own any of the restaurants, like, there, there, there lies the problem. You know, the teachers who are educating our babies, they don't look like us. So how do you expect them to treat, to, to teach a, 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 black, a black boy or a black little girl you know, all these things. So it's just, that, that's, that type of stuff really frustrates me because it's just like, I want to, I, I grew up in a West Indian household where ownership of homes and ownership of, of, of everything that, that your surroundings, my dad has always owned a business. I don't know, I've never known him to work for anybody in my life. And that has, that, that resonates with me. And that's, that educated me far beyond, you know, mm-hmm. a, a business degree. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So I think we as a people have to get to that point where ownership and power, and if, and if you feel like you can't, you know, you're, you're, that's not your expertise, then support people who are putting themselves in that, that, to, that, to that position. Because, yeah, we can, I, can, I can burn somebody's thing down. Yeah, it's not my restaurant. It's not run by my people. I don't care. Right. So, you know, definitely as a community, we need to come together and start running our own shit. That's very true. But also, we have to realize real quick, um, I don't want to, I know you probably got to move on to the next point, Mo, um, but I think also we have to also realize, like, but when it comes to also Black wealth, when we move past the situations, the buildings that we have burnt down, are they within our Black communities? Are they Black-owned businesses? Okay, because we, we preach about Black-owned businesses and investing in Black-owned businesses, but if we're burning down these same Black-owned businesses that you know that don't have the money to rebuild, what are we really doing? We're crippling our communities. So it's like, let's be smart. Killer Mike said, be organized. I saw a video today about Japanese riots being organized. You know, they have designated teams that do certain things. That's what we have to do. We have to be smart about this. Yeah, we want we want the world to feel black people well we got to do it the right way we can't just be out here and be quote unquote animals like they expect us to be we got to be smart we got to move we got to organize we got to make sure that this shit makes sense so that our presence is felt and it's not forgotten because at the end of the day how many times have we done this how many times have we have we burnt up shit and rioted and protested we've done this way too many fucking times yeah. so if we don't do this let's do it the right way so that they can feel our presence i agree right. that's why i feel like killer mike's speech was so like everything it, it was everything because you're angry but you're listening to what he's saying and you're like yeah well yeah point you know and you're feeling everything and you're feeling all the emotions and you're feeling why people do doom but you're listening uh -huh. to killer mike like oh well shit yeah let's and, and I, I shout out to the people, like you said, like the Japanese people, the people in Chile, the people in Spain who have been tweeting like, hey, guys, we just had a protest. This is how you do it. Really? Hey guys, wear this. Wear the protective goggles. Hey, guys, this is how we've been doing. It. So shout out to them as well. Mm -hmm. Right. And I want to I want to kind of, um, you know, we'll wrap it up here in a minute because I still want to hear y'all's advice and encouragement after this. But I want to say this because I've seen a lot of this. There are good cops and there are bad cops. Let me tell you, if you are a cop that is not speaking up, that is not being, this time to snitch, okay? I condone snitching in a certain capacity, and this is the time to snitch, okay? If you're not snitching, if you're not speaking up, if you're not coming to the forefront, you are added to that. I saw there said, like, I saw people saying, like, oh, there could be 10 good cops and a 1,000 bad cops, but if those 10 good cops aren't speaking up and they aren't, the, you know, they aren't stopping the situation, they aren't doing anything, then there's a 1,010 bad cops. Mm -hmm. Like, we're, we understand, we understand people have family members that are going out there and risking their lives, because there are Black people on the force as well, are going out there risking their lives. We get it. But every day, let me tell you, this makes me so emotional. Like, when I think of my cousin, my cousin is 18. He just turned 18. Like, y'all know them is the most terrible times. Teenage times is where you go out, you feel like you can do anything. I was doing all types of shit. And so I really, really feel for him. And the fact that I've had to have conversations with him, like, listen, if you get stopped, this is what you need to do. If you do, you know, just stuff like that makes me kind of emotional. We're walking out of our homes risking our lives every day. We don't know if we're going to be back just off of our skin color. Yeah. So it's like if you are if you feel like this person is risking their life or you feel like there are good cops, then it's time for them to speak up. It's time for them to stand up. It's time for them to penetrate into the system. It's time for them to stand up, like, period. And that's just what I'm going to put on that one, whether people like it or not. It's time. If you can hide behind a badge and murder somebody, you can filtrate into the system and say something, period. I like, agree. period. It's not, it's not a black and white thing. It's a black and cop thing. And I, I seen someone tweet something really cool, like, are you a good cop if you see bad cops doing bad things and you don't speak up about it? Look, we all got family friends that are cops, but baby, if you ain't talking about it, does it make you a good cop? You know, and this is a life that you chose. You chose to be a police officer. You exactly. chose to be a firefighter. You chose to do your job. And yes, uh -huh. there probably are good cops, but shit, are you speaking up? Are you calling people out? I seen a really cool video of that one black officer who was calling shit up, but is he the only one? You know what I'm saying? Like, speak up. And I have a lot of friends and family who are cops, but are y'all doing the right thing when you see bad shit? And like I said, it's not a black and white thing. It's a black and cop thing because cops 
to them it was Blue Lives Matter. Remember Blue Lives Matter? They all came together. So I just feel like if you are a quote unquote good cop, are you stepping up and you're doing the right thing? Because you know when that guy was on um, Dan, uh, shit, George's George's neck, there was four other cops just standing there. So right. that's my beef with the police officers. Stand up and do the right thing. I know. Then, sorry. Sorry. No, you're In another pet peeve of mine, people, please don't bring up the fact that you know we also kill our own people. That's a whole another issue. I hate that. I hate that. <laughs> Bullshit. Black on black crime. That shit's not real. Right. Well, that, I mean, there, that that does happen, but there's a reason why it happens. We have to talk about gentrification. We have to talk about the, you know, there, there, that's a whole nother conversation. So if you're going to bring up that sentence, oh, well, you know, we, because I, I know black people who say it too, we kill our own people as well. If you're going to say that, then provide at least like Monique said, Google's your best friend. Look up the reason why we're we're we're, we're packed like sardines in you know eighteen story eighteen story sky rises in you know a place where you know there's it's a food desert. We can't find like look up all that stuff, mm -hmm. then come with that research, and that's a totally separate issue that also needs to be dealt with. And right. unless you're gonna provide a, a, a conclusion or a, a way to solve it, don't come at don't come at me. Okay, that's all I have to say. There. Guys, I'm, I do want to. Yeah. Puppy, so if you guys see me like moving around or keep muting, it's oh. doing the most. So I apologize if you guys see me like moving all over the place. It's the damn puppy. No worries, I'm moving all over the place too. Okay, so to wrap up this, what encouragement, advice, anything y'all have on this on this matter of Black Lives Matter? Please let us know now. Um, it's okay for you to stand up for what you believe in. It's okay to use your voice. Um, if you do decide to use your voice, make sure that it is in a way that is constructive and that it makes a difference. I'm tired of seeing dumb shit on social media. People think this is a joke. This is not a joke. A 19-year-old young man just got shot and killed the other day while protesting. He didn't know that day that when he went to protest that he was going to lose his life, but he did. So this is not a game. You know, like, the, like what we do today is going to affect our children tomorrow. So let's take this shit seriously. Right. I retweet what Candy said. And I just, you know, I, you know, I apologize for crying, but I, I understand everybody's pain. I understand the feelings. Um, I understand where everybody's coming from, whether it's peaceful or you're protesting. But like Candy said, like, it's not a joke. This is not a game. Like, if you're going to be serious about it, be serious about it. If you're going to post shit, know what the fuck you're speaking about. Um, and donate. Like, if you're white and you're not, and you're Hispanic and you're not black, do something about it. Like, I don't, I thank you for reaching out, but do something about it. Donate. Stand up. I've seen a great video of the white allies standing and barricading the black people. Be an ally and do what you got to do. And to my black people, I see y'all. I love y'all. All black lives matter, whether that's men, women, trans, gay, lesbian, B LGBTQ plus I community, we all matter. And, you know, I know some, right now mentally it's, it, it hurts a lot of people. And I understand when you want to depress and get off of social media. I understand if you don't want to go to the protest, but just know that like we love you all and I love every single one of us. Go and support a black business so that we can we can have more money in our community so therefore we can have our own you know police station we can have our own fire we can have people that look like us in positions of power and we can support them yeah yeah and i i i just want to say this too sorry candy i i just want to say this too also get to know your rights know your local voting dates because we a lot of us don't know those know your local voting dates Know your uh, know all the amendments by 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 memorization. We learned them in school, but most of us probably don't know all of them. Mm -hmm. Know those by memorization. Understand the Constitution because we're working around stuff until systematically we can bust down doors and change laws. So know your rights. Know how to change a law, whether it takes a certain amount of petitions or whatever, because you may not want to go out and riot and loot. But these are the ways that it can be done. It can be mm -hmm. by knowing your rights, knowing what laws. For instance, y'all know that the guys from Georgia can't be um, can't can't actually be charged with a hate crime because there's no hate crimes in Georgia, and that's the South. There should be nothing. But there should be, there should have already been a hate crime law, no matter what. Um, so just know your laws, understand the law, understand the judicial system. That is so important um, as well, because we're working around 
a system that is trying to continue to oppress us even in 2020. Yeah. And I honestly, I just need to piggyback off of what you said because you took the words right out of my mouth. You know, we are electing these officials. Are we holding these officials accountable? You know, how many times have we had town hall meetings where we're speaking our grievances about the jobs that they're not being done and the things that they said that they were going to do that they're not doing? Like, we need to be holding these people accountable the whole time, not when it's beneficial to you, not when it's beneficial during election time. No. Did they say that they were going to do for your zone? No, they like like. Why would you vote this person to a higher position when they ain't take care of their own fucking zone? Okay, but we're not paying attention to that. We're just sitting up here complaining. Oh well, this this street was supposed to get fixed twelve years ago. Why why are the streets still getting built? There are so many like. One of the issues I would have living in Florida and then also living in Atlanta is I would always complain about the streets. Like, like they were just like, they would always say on the news, oh, you know, we've been putting this money into the streets. We got these toll roads and that's where the money is going. You look eight years later and the streets are still the same. Still. These, are the things, these are the things that are important. They may seem small to some people, but they actually, they actually go to show that these people that you've elected, they're not doing what they said that they were going to do. They're not doing their job. So why do you think they're going to do their job when it comes to you? Okay. They're not. Even when it comes to like, when, okay, so I used to date a police officer. My ex is a police officer. I was there when he was in police academy. And one of the things, and, and I'm, a, you know, I don't mind, I'm going to put it out there. We need to hold the curriculum um, accountable that they teach these police officers, period. One of the things that they need to do is they need to have mental health tests to determine whether they are afraid of certain races. Because that should be red flag. Why the hell are you sending somebody out to protect and serve a community that they don't know shit about and that they feel uh, so in, in some ways intimidated by? That is like, like, what are you like? Are you kidding me? Of course, they're going to walk into that being afraid. Like we need to change the curriculum and we need to start in places that we're not even talking about. Police Academy is a big one. Yeah, right. I agree with all that. And as much as we could go on about this forever and ever, because I feel like all of us are passionate about it, especially being Black queens, um, we're going to wrap up this episode. And we're wrapping up the season, guys. Um, we will be back in season two. Um, and we'll let y'all know when it's going to be a, the, I want to say the first week of September is um, when we'll start back. And we will have new episodes, but if you haven't caught up, Queens, make sure you listen to all the rest of the episodes. We have some fun ones. We have some that are very personal to us, and we have some that really take on conversations like this. So make sure you listen to all of them, and make sure y'all DM us or ask us questions or follow us on all social media platforms at Queens Uncut. I'm Monique Gloveless. You can find me everywhere at It's Money Gloveless. Ladies, let them know where they can find you. Guys, I'm being attacked by a fucking puppy, but you guys can find me on all social media at Kiki Bubble. Make sure you guys follow the Queens of Cut social media because while we're off, we'll be posting like old episodes and old videos so that way you guys can catch up on episodes that you guys did not get a chance to see. Yes, I'm retweeting everything that these last two queens just said. Uh, you can find me, Queens, on Instagram at Miss Candy Marie and on Twitter at Sweet Kendroy TV. And if you want to support a black business, I have a black business, so you can check out Sit. Uh, <laughs> You know the, the, the damn web, website, centeringcompany.com, or you can go on Centering Company uh, on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Um, not only you know support my business, but support. There's plenty of other black black businesses locally that you should support. So I definitely encourage that. You can follow me on everything at TK Trinidad. Yes, yes, and thank you, Queen. Bye. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Oh, y'all, this damn fucking.